also, I was just saying thank you to Amy for her speech. I find her work interesting, but surprisingly impactful. Um, when I heard Amy speak, I wasn't expecting her to change my posture and cause me to expand my body a lot more, but she has, and I will admit that in high stress situations, I power pose in the bathroom. <laughs> something I never thought I would be doing, but it's great. Um, but I really am excited to be sitting up here next to Amy, and I wanted to sort of make this personal because Amy has an incredibly interesting and inspiring story that I think is worth sharing. So my first sort of personal question is, you spoke to us tonight about all your strategies and being present. How have you applied it to your day-to-day -day life um, in terms of coming to a big filled room like this and making a speech, but also you have a child. Mm. A lot of us in the room are parents. There's a lot of children here. How do you apply your lessons and your research to your life? So I, you know, the funny thing for me is that although public speaking was my biggest challenge probably 15 years ago, it's now truly, oh, funny feedback. It's where I feel the most comfortable. So it's possible your mic your laugh might get a little tweaky, so why don't we use the table mic just so we don't have that problem. Okay, all right. Sorry. I just don't want you to keep going. <laughs> all right. All right, let's see. And, and hopefully my, my other mic's turned up. Okay, so this feels, it's funny, I, I now walk onto stage and I feel like this is where I'm the most comfortable. And I think it's partly because I'm an extrovert. And so this a thousand people, that feels fine and safe. But what I find stressful is sort of one-on-one -on -one conflict. Mm -hmm. I still find that very challenging, especially, you know, um, personal conflict with somebody that I care about because the stakes feel so high in that situation. So that's where I really feel, and I net, honestly, you know, teaching at a business school, I'm kind of very, was very focused on the professional world. I wasn't thinking of all of the outside the workplace applications, but now I kind of think there are more, mm -hmm. or at least as many. And for me, it's figuring out how to feel confident and at peace when I go into those kinds of, you know, discussions. Because the only way that I can be open to what the other person is saying is if I'm feeling present. And I write about this quite about a bit in the book, that presence begets presence. Presence liberates others to be present. Because you're saying, I'm being real, you can trust me, so they can be real. So that's what I'm trying to do. I still find it, you know, I still find it to be challenging. Funny story about this. A, a good friend of mine wrote and said, uh, she said, I, so it's kind of, a, she and her boyfriend were breaking up. And she said they were going to be breaking up. They knew that. But they had to have the conversation about it. And so they planned to meet to have the conversation. And they met. And they immediately got into this sort of like, it's your fault. You did this. And, I, you know, I was just, so they, they immediately went into this sort of defensive, it's not my fault mode. And, and her boyfriend said, wait a minute. Stand up, Wonder Woman. Let's Wonder Woman for 30 seconds. And I thought that was, I was like, wow, what a crazy application. But she said, the craziest thing was that we both felt so much stronger and more open to each other mm -hmm. that we were able to actually hear each other and leave the interaction not feeling so bitter and angry. Uh, so for me, it's really personal conflict and trying to figure out how to apply it there. And your story is really interesting. Um, you have, in my mind, overcome a lot of challenges and adversity and changed your career path from being a dancer to this type of work. Can you talk to the audience about your career path and how you became connected <laughs> to, to this science? Well, I, I have to tell you, the truth is that the career path I'm most sad that I left behind <laughs> um, was uh, I was a roller skating waitress through college. <laughs> and I have to say, after being a roller skating waitress, it is a wonder to me that we don't are not on roller skates doing everything it's, because it's all it is so much more efficient. <laughs> so I really miss that one. But uh, the funny thing, I mean, first of all, I would have to say I'm not a big believer in a path. Mm -hmm. And um, recently, a young guy who had written to me, um, uh, amazing guy who had escaped Rwanda as a child, grew up in Kenya, became a lawyer in Toronto, amazing kid. Uh, said that, that the path, you know, you, the path sort of reveals itself to you. You know, you don't really know what the path is. You just have to, as long as you have an open heart and mind, the path will reveal itself. So I'm not a believer in having a long-term sort of goal. I think New Year's resolutions are, are 
backfire and make us feel terrible because they're too big and too distant and there are a million tiny steps in between and maybe we'll change our mind or we might fail in all those tiny steps. So for me, um, I'm much more about trying to be open to what what comes to me and uh, and so that has meant you know changing course many times mm -hmm. to a place where I finally am starting to feel like this is where I want to be uh, but recently you know and you know I, I was a deadhead mm -hmm. and not I'm still still a deadhead actually you might see my Jerry Garcia sticker on my laptop there <laughs> uh, but you know a ballet dancer I was a roller skating which like I did lots of different things I've had lots of different pieces of my life I never thought I would be a psychologist um, I never thought I'd be a Harvard professor for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, you know, I had this serious head injury when I was in college that took me out of college for a long time. And, um, you know, I lost 30 IQ points and was told I wouldn't go back to college. I eventually, four years later, finished. I mean, so in eight years instead mm -hmm. of four. You know, there were a lot of things that were sort of through, a lot of yeah. um, uh, um, obstacles. But I think that now, and it's funny, in the process of writing this book about being authentic and understanding who you are, one of the things I had to do to write the book was test these things as I went. You know, so I'm reviewing all of the science and going, what do I want to put in the book and what, what's not going in? And one of the, the, the litmus tests was, I'm going to try this and see if it feels applicable. Is it actionable? Does it work? And so I'm going through all these like authenticity exercises and going, uh-oh, I'm not in quite the right life. And so I made a decision. I finished the book. Um, not long before it came out, I was you know, always pushing the limits, and I made a decision after writing the book that I wasn't. I needed to do fewer things in my work life. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I'm going to work less, but I'm going to spend more time doing the things that I really enjoy doing, and they're not the ones I expected. So here's the big one for me. I am, so I, I, you know, I've been at Harvard for um, nine years, eight years. It's time to go up for tenure. I've been, through, I've been promoted twice. Like, this is supposed to be for an academic, the, you know, this is sort of like the, the be all end all to get tenure at Harvard. So I, here I am about to submit my tenure packet, and I decided um, about a month and a half ago, I don't think I want tenure. I don't yeah. think that's what I want. I think I only want that to prove to myself that I can get that. Right. But it was actually a conversation with um, a, a, someone who's become a good friend and, co and confidant and advisor to me and someone you all might be familiar with, Brene Brown. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Brene's like my, my sister here in this, in this being an academic and someone talking to a broader audience because it is tough to do this. And I talked to her about it and she kind of made a similar decision, not quite the same. She has tenure but, you know, does the things she wants to do there and travels a lot. And she said to me, this, is the, this was the moment I knew she was right. She's like, look, because everyone was like, we just go through the process anyway because you'll probably get it and won't, it, won't you be sorry if you don't go through it and you don't find out? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, t I told Brene that she's like, that's nonsense. She said, this is why. She goes, you're climbing this ladder. You're going to get on the roof. That's fine. You'll climb up and you'll, you'll, you'll get tenure. You'll get on the roof and you'll turn around and go, damn, I had my ladder against the wrong building. Yeah. And I think she was exactly right. Like, maybe I will get tenure, but I'll get there, and it's not the building I want to be standing on. So I decided I want to remain part of the university. I want to do some research, but I really want to serve um, underserved populations. I want to mm -hmm. be teaching to people outside the business school, the people who don't have formal power. That's who I want to hear these lessons. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, so... That was a that was a huge, huge risk. And I just can tell you, the moment, like going in and telling the dean, I decided I'm not going up for tenure. That was that was terrifying. Wow. But as soon as the conversation was over, I felt so liberated. Wow. I knew absolutely it was the right decision. So that that's. Wow. I mean, that's, there you go. that's certainly a courageous move. And <laughs> wait, so wait, impressive. advice: be open to the path because you don't you don't know what it is. You just don't know. You know the things you love. Follow those things. Do them. I know. Follow your passion. It's true, but also be open to opportunities. Just and and wait for them to speak to you and follow those ones. Great. One more. Okay. Great. So your work has gotten so much attention. Um, when I first saw you speak, I had no idea that you were 
the second most popular TED Talk. W what are some of the positives and some of the negatives uh, of that of that publicity? Well, <laughs> the, the, the the fact that the the term power posing and the idea was so sticky, mm -hmm. it, it's great in some ways. And I love that so many people are using just these simple poses before they go into the challenging situations. There are a couple of downsides. One is that I feel like it's harder for me to to broaden that message, right? To say, look, this isn't just about this. This is the body-mind connection. The body is constantly in conversation with the mind, and you can take control of the content of that conversation. It's not as sticky as stand like Wonder Woman for two minutes. So it's hard to, to you know, start there. Mm -hmm. And like all, all the people, you, I, I had an Amazon reviewer say, it should have been like the 20-minute TED Talk, the book, about the book. I'm like, well, it's a 350-page book. Like, it's not right. going to be a 20-minute TED Talk. You know, but so you do get a little bit stuck with it. Well, you did this thing really, really well, and I want everything to be like that. The other problem, I think, is that in academia, it is not easy to be talking to broader audiences. You will inevitably experience backlash from inside academia. And it, it um, I'm just being totally honest, it, there's been some truly nasty bullying that I've that I've been dealing with not not for many people but from a small group and um, and I, I you know people kept telling me don't don't push back because it will upset them and I didn't do that and I recently have started to a bit and I don't it's hard I don't want to engage exactly you know I don't want to dignify the these the, the, the some of the attacks but I do think it's time for to, right. to stand up for myself, and that's been really tough. So to have my sort of integrity as a scientist attacked by a couple of people who I th honestly feel are a little bit, you know, bitter, resentful, feel like they're not getting enough attention, that has been really painful for me. Um, that's tough, and that's my that's a big challenge too. <laughs>